also let me spotlight my um let me share my screen with you sorry and then i know we're all here so we don't have to wait anymore but like i mentioned today the session is about plato and i don't know oh, there we go plato um so most of you i'm sure because myself too even though i'm much older than you we've all played with plato janelle have you played with plato before i have it was one of my favorite things when i was growing up me too i love being creative and creating some figurines and stuff but before we even start with the session um, and creating Plato and learning about the science behind Plato, I want to make sure you all have what you need. So let's go. Let's just go through the list that you have. Uh, you see here, and um, we can make sure that we're ready to go. So we have flour. That's one of the things you need. It's huge. <laughs> here it is. <laughs> I have two kilos because I have two sessions to do. So. I have a big bag of flour. You also need cream of tartar. So this little thing right here. Um, for those, I know this is harder to find. It's not really something you have at home. Maybe some of you do. But um, if you don't have this, that's fine. As a good substitute, so a good, um, another ingredient you can use is oil. Um, so any vegetable oil you have at home, the ones that you cook with, you can ask your adult if you don't have the cream of tartar, you can ask your adult for that, okay? You also need salt, it's also big. <laughs> um, you need water, I have my water here, but Janelle is actually going to get me my warm water later when we start, because the water for this to work has to be warm. It doesn't have to be hot, it's not like you're making tea, um, but it just have to be, has to be warm. I know I said you need a microwave to warm up the water, um, I find that just the tap water, if you run it very hot, you know how we turn the tap water on and it's the hot one. Um, you can also use that one. Just be careful when you're getting that water because you know how to hurt my hand just putting it in there. Um, so if you need help, you can ask your adult to get that hot water, but tap water, hot tap water is completely fine. If you find that your tap water is not turning that hot, then yes, use the microwave. I only put about 15 seconds. That's enough. 10 um, to 15. Yeah, we've had a question about yes. our supplies as well. Um, would you be able to use lemon juice in replace of cream of tartar? Um, I haven't tried that. And all the recipes I've seen, I, don't, I haven't seen um, lemon juice um, or lemon. Mm, I would say no. The oil is a good replacement, though. The cream of tartar just adds consistency. So just makes it like stronger um but so does the oil so that's fine thank you for the question um what else what am i missing oh yeah your food coloring so i have four types of food coloring i have blue pink red and or and what looks like yellow but i think it's green <laughs> um you need also your wool so um i know i said one in the supply list when we send it to your adults but if you have two, that's better because what I want to do today is if you have two different colors of food coloring, I want to separate our Play-Dohs. So that way we have, let's say, a red one and a blue one or a green one and a red one because that way you have more colors and you can make figurines and stuff. So Gabby, I just looked up if you can use lemon juice mm -hmm. instead of cream and tartar. And so you can use lemon juice because it has like the same acidity Oh. Um, that cream of tartar brings to Play-Doh, but you would have to use the same amount. So you'd have to squeeze two tablespoons of lemon juice. So two tablespoons. Thank you, Janelle. That's the wonders of the internet. Um, so I have my tablespoon right here because I have to measure it. Some of you might have already measured your um, what you need. So two cups of flour, two tablespoons of cream of tartar, salt, half a cup. And water is one cup. Again, that one has to be warm, not like too hot, just warm. Um, and then I just said cups because we're going to be mixing our food coloring and water there, just so we keep things separate. And then we learn about the science of mixing things. And a spoon, which I think I'm missing. Um, <laughs> well, a spoon too. Just any spoon that you have at home works. It's just for mixing things. Um, once the Play-Doh, we make, thank you, Janelle, we make the dough, the spoon. 
Once we make the dough, we won't be using the spoon anymore, we'll use our hands. And as you can see, I think you can see my hand is already put a full color, food coloring. Okay, so I think that's good. Um, I will ask you really quickly if you're ready to start. So, um, so that means like you have all your supplies with you. Let me know if yes or no. I will always give you some time. Uh, we can go slower if needed and such, okay? So it looks like most of you are ready to start. For those of you who are not um, and you're gathering things, that's fine. If you have any questions and that's why you're not ready yet, ask Janelle in the chat and then she will let me know or she will reply to you um, if she can. All right, so I'm going to give you 10 more seconds to reply. So I usually, every time I do a poll, I will give you a countdown and that, that way you know that you have to submit your answer, so click your answer before I end it, before I close the poll. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So it looks like most of you are ready to start. Again, if you're not, ask Janelle if you have any questions, okay? All right. So I'm going to spotlight, I'm gonna stop sharing this, and I'm going to spotlight my creation of Play-Doh. Can you see it? I hope so. So yeah, here's my creation. I made purple, what looks like purple um, and blue Play-Doh, and um, I made some figures with it. I used cookie cutters. I didn't ask for cookie cutters. Um, for example, I don't have cookie cutters. And um, I know not many, not like everybody has it, only if you love baking for sure. But if you do, this is something cool to use. If not, you can simply just make figurines after, just make your own figures and mold them as you want, as you wish. And then, yeah, it's just playing like with Play-Doh just like usual. So this is what I made, a star, a little cookie, cookie person, like in the shape. And then I have like my remit, like what leftover Play-Doh I had. Um, as you can see, my Play-Doh, it has like little stripes. It has like cool designs, right? I made that because I added the food coloring after I made the dough. I'm gonna show you both ways, but the first one we're gonna be making, uh, and the ones you're gonna be making is um, just like the solid color, so it's no stripes. After, um, I will show you what I did to make it stripes like that. And if you have leftover ingredients and your parents, your adults are okay with you using more, you can make it like I did. We just have a quick question, yes. Daddy. Can you use a paper bowl to do the mixing or is there too much water, do you think? Oh, um, there's not too much water. I just fear that it might soak and like soak the paper bowl and then it would break. Yeah, so maybe Lucas, if you don't mind using two, like two paper bowls so that it's really thick. Yeah. Or if you have like plastic wrap, you can put over your paper bowl. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, you just need it for mixing. So you'll just have to add the water in slowly yeah. so it doesn't soak. Um, make your paper bowl too wet. Any container works. Um, you can also use those like containers you get for lunch um, as long as they're bigger. Any container works. That's plastic. Um, I wouldn't recommend glass because I fear that we might break it, but plastic containers work. It doesn't necessarily have to be an actual bowl. It has, it can be any, any deep, big container, okay? Um, okay, so I'll start, and I'm going to share my screen again so you can, we can all learn together the science behind Play-Doh because there is actually science behind Play-Doh. Who knew, right? Okay, so in Play-Doh, we have um, the ingredients, so we learned about the ingredients, right? Am I sharing the screen? No, I'm not. <laughs> Sorry. How many cups? Uh, how many tablespoons of oil would they need for two cups of flour? Um, I believe can it start with one tablespoon because it's it's just more oily, I guess. Start with one tablespoon. So I know we're using two of cream of tartar. Just start with one of oil. Thank you for your question. So um, today we're learning about the science behind Play-Doh, right? So water mixtures, substances, some substances and solutions. I know these are fancy words, but I will be explaining them later as we go on. Um, so 
with the flour I have it here, the salt and the cream of tartar, which is a powder, right? We are adding a little bit of food coloring to make it more fun, so several colors. Again, if you only have one color, that's completely okay. It's just um, if you have more than one, we can separate the dough and then make more um, of different colors. Um, and you can send us your creations later on in a picture. So, well, let me share this screen with you so you can learn about oh my goodness, you can learn about this, um, what a substance mixture and solution is. Okay, so a substance, S U B S T A N C E, is just like saying ingredient. So. A substance is flour and a substance is salt. However, when we mix them together, it becomes a mixture. So when we mix the flour and the salt together, which I'm gonna do now just as, as an example, okay? I'm not asking you to do it yet. Um, but when we mix the flour with the salt, we have a mixture. And a mixture is different from a solution because in a mixture, things, even though your ingredients, your substances are combined, are together, you mix them together, right? Even though they're mixed together, they're still not completely together. So if you really, let's just add a tablespoon of salt. Again, you don't have to do this. I'm just demonstrating something, showing you something. But if you just mix it together, you will see, here, let me spotlight my video. And I'll just end the share because I want you to all see very carefully. In a mixture, thing, um, your substances, your ingredients, you'll still be able to separate them after. So if you use a very, um, you know, in your kitchen, so you might have um, what's called a sieve. <laughs> Do you know, is it a sieve? Yeah, so it's just like this little mitt like a net that you use to separate things, like if you're making juice. Um, so if you use that, a very good one, the ones that scientists use, you're able to actually separate the salt from the flour because they actually didn't really mix together, right? They're just there, both of them there. That's why it's a mixture. However, when you mix, let's say, water and food coloring, I'm adding some green food coloring. Oh, I think that's upside down, right? Yeah, okay, there we're good. So when you add some water and food coloring, can you really separate this water and food coloring? Not really. So it's now together. It became a whole substance of its own, a whole new ingredient of its own. So that means it's a solution because it's mixed and you cannot really separate this water from the food coloring. That's the difference. So solution, you cannot separate them anymore. It's, been, it's become one substance, one thing of its own. However, with the flour and the salt, you can separate them. It will be hard, and that's why you need really good um, like tools from scientists. But you can actually separate the salt from the flour again, and that's why it's just called a mixture, because no chemical reaction has happened. A chemical reaction has happened here, because it has mixed together very well. The liquid, sorry, this water and the food coloring, okay? So if you were in Janelle's um, Ublek session on, well, weeks ago, <laughs> you have, you learned about what um, a solid, a gas, and a liquid is. So let me share my screen again. So we can, oh, where did that go? There it is. So we learned about mixture, and then we also learned about solutions. So yeah, Janelle let you know about solid, which is the first one, because molecules are very close together. That's why it makes a solid. Think of a fist that's close together. It's very hard, right? A solid is hard. Then in the liquid, molecules, the little molecules inside a liquid, they're just floating about, but there is a little bit more. Um, and, and in a gas, they have less, and they're just spread up apart. So that's why a gas is so light. Um, 
So in a solid, like a rock, um, things again are very close together. Then another example of liquid is water, like we know that. And an example of gas is the air in a balloon. So your breath, it's air, the air in a balloon, air around us, the oxygen around us. So that's all gas. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a poll and I want you to tell me what this, um, which of these ingredients and ones that we're using today are in the liquid state of matter. So remember, liquid, solid, and gas are all states of matter. And every, everything that you see in this world is either a liquid, a solid, or a gas. So I want you to explain to me which of these ingredients are liquid. Is it the flour? Is it the cream of tartar? Is it salt, water, food coloring, or the bowl that we're using? I want you to let me know. And you can choose more than one answer. You don't only have to choose one. I'll give you a hint. There is two answers. There is two right answers. So again, flour, cream of tartar, salt, water, food coloring, and the bowl. So I'm going to end the poll in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Perfect. It looks like most of you answered. And those of you who chose water and food coloring, you're right. So it is water and food coloring. As you can see, when I mixed it here, it's both liquids. They're both liquids um, because it's like water. Um, okay, so now I want you to tell me which of these ingredients is in a solid state of matter. So is it again, it's the same ingredients. So is it again, flour, cream of tartar, salt, water, food coloring, or bowl? Again, you can choose more than one. Um, we know now, I gave you the answer of the liquid. So water and food coloring, they're liquid. So we know that's not a solid. But which ones are solid, right? That's a question. And again, you can choose more than one answer. Any questions from the audience, Janelle? Okay. Just gonna drink a little bit of water. As you're all answering this, I have a little question for all of you. Um, what is your favorite cookie? Ooh, yeah, we want to know. We love cookies. I would love to know if you have any recommendations that you want to tell us what your favorite is and you want to um you want us to try it. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll in five, four, three. Two, one. So ending. And all of you are right. It is flour, cream of tartar, salt, and bowl. So all of these things are solid. I know um, I like an example of solid is a rock. And well, a fl like flour and um, salt is not really like rock, like a rock, but they're solid. Very good. And now the last one. I want to know which of these ingredients is in the gas state of matter. So it's again, like air, like the air around us, the air you breathe, um, the air in a balloon. So I want to know that. And I'm going to give you um, some time to reply to the question, to answer. So most of you have been answering. That's very good. And again, I'm going to give you a 10 second countdown. So now we can begin our experiment so our making of play-doh 10 9 8 7 6 5 sorry 5 4 3 2 1 perfect so i'm going to end the poll and most of you are right almost all of you um it's none so none of these ingredients are gas however for those of you who chose water Water becomes a gas. Um, when you know when you boil, so you um, when your parents are making tea, let's say, and they boil the water, they make the water have little bubbles. That means it's releasing air, the oxygen in water. So yeah, so water becomes a gas after you put heat in it. So you make it hot, very hot, and it just releases, gets out the air in it. But very good. I'm proud of all of you. So smart. You're little Einsteins, all of you. All right, so now 
we will, oh, sorry, we will continue with our Play-Doh making. So I'm going to be spotlighting my other camera, but I'm still here. I know some of you are able to see me still, but it, depending on what device you're using, you might only see my, my table. Um, because of this expert, like, session, we're using food coloring, just be, be very careful with your, the table you're using. Um, make sure we keep everything in the bowl. That way we're not just um, getting the table dirty with food coloring and such, and your adults will be happy. <laughs> but um, let's get your bowl first. Where is in my... I had a... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Here's my second one. Okay, so let's get your bowl first. And I'll just put my plate all around. And I want you all to get your two... Is it... Two? Yeah, two cups of flour first. So I have my cup right here, my measuring cup. I know most of you might already have the flour and your ingredients measured already. That's great. Um, so I'm going to measure one cup of flour. So I, this is a trick I have. Just put it inside the bowl so you're not spilling flour outside on your table. So put it inside and be careful while getting your flour into the bowl. So it's two cups. So one full cup and then we have to do it all over again. So as you can see, I spilled a little bit more than I needed. So it looks like this is more than a cup, of course. So I'm gonna pour it there. And then when I'm doing the second cup, if, if you did what I did, which is I put a little bit more than a cup, just make sure that this time instead of a cup is like just a little bit less, okay? When you're making, um, like creating things out of measurements, so like one cup, one tablespoon and things like that, it's good to follow really well the instructions. So if, it, if they tell you two cups, make sure it is two cups, just because otherwise the consistency or the, the way, how would you say consistency, you know? <laughs> the, the way it feels, you know, would be different. You don't want it to be too soft, your plate, or you don't want, to be, want it to be too hard. However, I'll be asking you if your Play-Doh is too soft or too, or too hard as we're making this, because I can help you in that case, okay? So I have my two cups of flour, which is here, and now I need my half cup of salt. So I have half a cup, measuring cup, right here. If you don't have a half a cup measuring cup, that's fine. You can use your one cup measuring cup and just, um, it's half of it. That's good. So let me again inside my bowl just so I don't make a mess. And I'm just going to pour my salt. Also because I'm in Janelle's house and I don't want to make a mess in Janelle's house, right? You got to be careful with being clean and stuff and organized. So it looks like it, I'm almost at half a cup. There we go. So half a cup, ready, pour. And then we need our two tablespoons of cream of tartar. So I have my cream of tartar right here. It was already open because I made my Play-Doh beforehand to show you all how, what we're gonna be making today. Sorry, this might be noisy. Oh goodness, there we go, let's take it. So I have my tablespoon right here, and I'm just gonna get one, again, inside my bowl, not to make a mess. One and two. I feel like we're making some dough for pizza. <laughs> when I made this last night um, to prep for the session, to, so that I can show you the Play-Doh, um, I, I felt like I was a pizza chef. Okay, so now we have our dry ingredients in the bowl. They're dry because they're not liquid, right? They're solid. So I will get my spoon. Oh, I used it for this. Okay, makes sense. I will get my spoon and just start mixing. Really carefully. We don't want it to come out and spill on your table. We're just mixing all the three because we have three dry ingredients there, which is the flour, the cream of tartar, and the salt. I'll repeat the ingredients again that we just did and the measurements, so how much we used. We used two cups of flour. We used half a cup of salt, and we used two tablespoons of cream of tartar. 
So we're mixing and mixing. And as you can see, look how much this is. This will make so much Play-Doh for you to actually have lots of fun. And you can actually, if you want, share with your siblings, um, however you want to do this, because this will make a lot of Play-Doh. So now that we have our bowl full of the dry ingredients, let's have, um, let's mix our liquids. So that means the food coloring and the water. So Janelle will grab me some warm water because again, it has to be warm. Oh, she already did, look at that. One cup of warm water, okay? So she went to the tap, um, to the bathroom, and she turned on the tap water, the hot one, very carefully. And then she used also one cup of, one cup of my measuring cup, and that was my one cup of water. Or you can also put it in the microwave and just warm it up for 15 seconds. So maybe Gabby and I will just pause for a couple, maybe 30 <laughs> seconds while you yes. will get your warm water. Yes. So I'm going to, like Janelle said, we're going to pause for a, a couple seconds while you're getting your warm water from the tap or you're microwaving your water. Again, for both of these things, um, just be careful. You don't want to hurt yourself, um, especially with the hot water when it's running and also when you're getting the hot water from the microwave. Just be careful how you're handling it, how you're taking it. Um, if you want, you can ask your adult for help for this particular step. But um, let me know in the chat once you're back. Actually, I'll just ask you in the poll. Um, it's, I'm still going to give you. Yeah, um, we just have a quick question from Princess. And so yes. because uh, they are using oil instead of cream and water, um, when should they put that in? Should they put that in now or with the water? With the water. So oil is also a liquid. So we're keeping liquids and solids apart. So separate. Very good question, Princess. Thank you for reminding me that some people are using oil. Um, Janelle, mm -hmm. will you mind throwing this away? Thank you. <laughs> I, I think we have some bags in here. So Janelle is just throwing, because um, remember we did a demonstration. I, sh I showed you how um, a mixture, the difference between a mixture and a solution is. She's just throwing away my, so my mixture because I need that bowl again. <laughs> So um, I hope most of you are back. I'm going to ask you if you're ready to start again. So again, we're at this step where we need our warm water. It doesn't have to be hot, hot. It just needs to be hot, warm. So we're at that step. So I'm going to re -ask, so ask you again if you're ready to start. Ready? Just answer yes or no. And if you answer no, I'll give you more time, of course. But it looks like most of you are back with your warm water. And I see, Asher, that you have your hand raised. So sadly, we can't hear you talk. We can't see. Oh, perfect. It looks like you're okay. Maybe you're just playing around with Zoom. Yeah. Perfectly okay. Yes. Um, Zoom's a tricky little tool. I know that a lot of you are almost ready to start, and a couple of you might just need another couple seconds. So if you are ready to go, and if your hands are nice and clean, um, if you would like to put in the chat, um, maybe something you want to ask me and Gabby, or if you want to tell us, maybe, have you, what's your favorite food oh, you've yes. eaten right now? Did and they, <laughs> oh, sorry, Adriana. Did they answer the question about the cookies? Yeah, so I had a lot of people say chocolate cookies. Uh-huh. Um, some I know Oreos were said, and... Mm, I love Oreos, you guys. My co-workers know I love Oreos, and in the office, we usually have Oreos in mm -hmm. there. <laughs> There's also Christmas cookies. <gasps> Christmas yeah. cookies. And they look like my Play-Doh that I made, because, you know, it's from a Christmas um, cookie cutter. So, so cute. Kaden asked, um, can they add the water in yet? Not yet. So I'm going to go through it soon. So it Gabby's going to give you an extra step, Caden, before you put in the water. Yes. Because we're going to do something a little different. Yeah. So don't put in the water first. Um, I just, while we're waiting for um, those of you who are um, still on the step of the water, which is completely fine, is I'm going to now explain again mixtures and solutions. So with the dry ingredients, do you remember what it is? Is it a mixture or is it a solution? I want you to answer it in the chat. So in the bowl, I have my dry ingredients. So that's the flour, the cream of tartar, and the salt. Is it a mixture or is it a solution? Remember, we talked about that. 
So it looks like Olive said a mixture. That is correct, Olive. It is a mixture. And that's because these ingredients can be separated again. It would be hard and you would have to have really fancy scientist tools, but it can. Now, let's put your bowl aside very carefully. I don't want you to drop it on the floor. And now we're going to do our liquid part of it, our solution. Because remember we said this part, because I already made it, was a solution. So just choose your favorite color, the food coloring you have. I am going to choose, actually I already did this one. I'm going to choose pink. It's red. It's reddish pink. <laughs> um, and that's the one that I'm going to be making. So you just need to add a couple drops. I'm going to add three. Actually, I, th I, I think that was four. <laughs> <laughs> so the more food coloring you'll add to your water, um, the more vibrant, so the more, the more bright that your Play-Doh is going to be. So if you want like a light colored Play-Doh, you don't have to add too much food coloring. But if you want it to be really, really, really blue or really, really, really red, then you'll have to add maybe four to eight drops of food coloring. So, so I want it to be very, very bright. So I'm going Oh, look, I have flour all over my arms. <laughs> so I'm going to add um, four more because I already added four. So I'm going to add eight. One, two, three, four. Mix again. If you find it that is still not the color you want, just keep adding some drops. Um, don't add too many though because I know you might be using this for your own baking um, at home. So I would be sad if your adult was sad because they didn't have any more food coloring. But um, I think this is very red actually. Um, I'm going to add two more because I do want it to be very vibrant, like Janelle said. So bright, another word for bright. Perfect. So we mixed it. Let me put my spoon away. So now I have my food coloring, right? So if you want this, I'm going, I'm going to show you how to make two different colors. This is why I asked you to have two bowls. Okay. So I'm going to put half of my mixture, half of my dry ingredients, into another bowl. If you don't have it, that's fine. I'm going to still show you how to mix the um, liquid with the solids. But this is just for those of you who have more than one food coloring. Then that way you can um, mix other ones. So I'm just going to put a little bit, or you don't even have to put half. Just put how much you want into the other bowl. I think that's good. And we're just separating both. That way we have two different colors. If you only have one, that's completely fine. And if you don't have two bowls, but you have more food coloring to make more colors, you can just use the normal water without any food coloring in it. Yeah. So you'll end up with some white Play-Doh. And then once that's done, you can mix in the food coloring. It'll just take a little bit longer because now it's solid. Yeah, so look, I had my white Play-Doh already. And this is how... I made my food like I put some color in it and that's why there's like stripes that's why it looks really nice because I added the food coloring after that's another option too okay so now we're going to mix our mixture with our solution so the solution again is the um that's a skittle <laughs> it's the red food coloring in my case it's a red I want to know before we mix things together what colors you have chosen so um where oh i thought i had it here do i have it there uh, you know what colors are you going to use there so i want to know what colors you chose you're using is it blue is it red yellow or green from the food coloring um containers you have the little containers and if you're using a different color like maybe you mixed blue and red to make purple we can put that in the chat too olive says um blue that's great olive um, I also used blue before. I don't know if you can see it. It looks, I really like the stripes thing. So if you really want it to look like this, um, you can add the food coloring later. You still have to add the water though. So that's the step we're going to be doing next. But I really liked it because it looks like some sort of, I don't know, blue zebra. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop the poll in five, four, three, two, one, and... Only one person is using yellow. But most of you are using blue. If I'm right, I think yellow. Caden told me they have red and yellow. 
So I'm wondering if Kaden, you are the only one that has yellow, which is my favorite color. So, yeah, it is I'm her very favorite. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So are you ready? Grab your spoon again. And we're slowly, I don't know if you can see my cup there, slowly adding the water. And while I'm adding, I'm mixing, okay? Mix, mix, mix. Mix, mix, mix. And because we use, we separated it, you're only using half of this cup, okay? If you didn't separate your mixture, you can use all of the cup. But in my case, I'm only using half of it, which I'm gonna add more. This looks like half. Again, everybody's doing something different, that's fine. If you find, while we're mixing, that your dough is becoming like, it's still too thick, too, um, what do you call it, too hard, you can continue to add a little bit more water, but that's as you continue. So see, it looks like I need more water because this didn't mix, so I'm still gonna add some water. Remember, we're adding one cup to your mixture if you didn't separate your dry ingredients. It looks like it needs a little bit more, so I'm adding a little bit more. There. So now um, you will have to use your hands because it will get too hard for your spoon. And actually, we need it to mix very well. Um, that way we make a dough. So just have fun with the dough and mix it with your hands. You will find that you will have a little bit of food coloring in your, on your hands. That's fine. Food coloring, um, you can, what do you call it? You can wash it off. I did when I made my own Play-Doh. And if you find that you added too much water, that's okay. Um, Gabby, what can they do? So you can add more flour. What I do is take your tablespoon or your actual spoon, that's fine. Grab a little bit of flour. Actually, mine is a little bit too watery too. Oops. Grab a little bit of flour and just start pouring some flour in, okay? And then until you find that, how it feels, that consistency, how it feels, it's hard enough that it feels like Play-Doh, okay? You will find too that even though it's still too soft, sometimes what you need is leave it out in the, in like on your kitchen countertop or whatever. Leave it out for about like 10 minutes and it will get harder because that's what I did too. You know, like any dough when you make pizza, I don't know if you've made pizza with your adults, but like any dough, sometimes you need to leave it out for a few uh, minutes, just out getting some air to get a little bit harder. But see, I'm adding some flour as I go. As you can see, my Play-Doh is red. If you want, you can do this exact same process with another color. I think this time I'll do it with green because I already had purple and blue in my other my other play-dohs that I made so this one feels good enough um, and I'm going to leave this one as it is right now so again if you find it shouldn't be too soft so this one is not too soft it's really good um, if it's like you feel it like it's hard but a little bit soft that's fine what it needs is you make it into like a bowl like that just not a perfect bowl but just like this and leave it out for a few minutes I would say 10 minutes is fine um, and you don't need to cover it or anything you just leave it out and then the air will make it become harder and that way you can play make more figurines because right now you can you I mean you can still make something like when I make a happy face do 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 I made a happy face but if you will need to let it out with to get some air. So now I have my other half of my mixture. And you know, we'll just get a little bit more warm water from the tap. It will be very fast. Um, again, what you can also do, actually, this is what I'll do. I'll show you what I did to do my Play-Doh to turn like stripes. So if you don't want to add the food, food coloring yet, because you want it to be like stripes like this, like space. Um, you can you can follow my lead and I'll show you how I did this you see my cookie man is like that 
So she has warm water. You gotta be careful again. And I just add my warm water. So this time add it slowly and then mix it with your spoon. Again, with your spoon is important this part because the water is warm. So mix it in. I didn't add food coloring this time because I'm showing you how to make the stripes one. So mix it in. So I think that's good. That's enough water for now. If you find that your Play-Doh or your dough, sorry, is too, too hard, you can also add more water. If you find it's too watery, you can add more flour. Would you like to do a second question, Daddy? Yes, please. So, um, do you mind yeah, asking? Yeah. Like. Uh, are you on the same step as me? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask all of you if you're on the same step as me. You can let me know by clicking yes or no. Uh, if your hands are messy, then we completely understand. Yes, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> my hands are messy. I do have my lovely sidekick right here. But, yeah, if it wasn't for her, I couldn't even ask you this question. What are we? A Disney movie, Gabby? Oh, we are. Are you the hero then and I'm the sidekick? Well... We're both heroes. <laughs> Maybe you all can type later when your hands aren't messy. We'll ask at the end if you think if I was a Disney sidekick animal, what animal do you think I would be? So we'll talk about that later. Perfect, Shabby. It looks like most people are on the same step. Yay! We have a few people that are one step behind, which is completely okay. Um. So let me just end this poll and let me ask. Um, if I'm going too fast. Um, oh, if everything went well, I, got, <laughs> I think I got some flower on my face. Oh, that's okay. Or on the same step, but maybe I'll ask: Is your Play-Doh too watery? Yes. And then we can help you if you're having some trouble. So my Play-Doh, actually, the one that I'm making, that's just white, no color yet. It was too watery. So, like I mentioned, if that's the case. You just add a little bit of flour and you continue. Um, after a while, you don't need to use the spoon anymore because the water is not warm anymore. Um, so you can touch your dough. I just used the spoon at the beginning because we added the warm water and I didn't want to get hurt with burning my hand. <laughs> um, so, so now it looks like I can use my hand now. So if your plate is still too watery, don't worry. Gabby said that you can add more flour. A lot of you said that your dough, is, your play dough isn't too watery, which is perfect. If you think it is too hard, what do you think they can do, Gabby? They can add a little bit more water. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my hands are full with dough. So I'm going to go really quick and wash my hands <laughs> so I can continue to explain things. Um, the next steps. And I will gladly take Gabby's place <laughs> while she is washing her hands. Um, let me just spotlight my video in the meantime. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all having lots of fun making your Play-Doh, and I'm sure you're making lots of fun colors. I know a lot of you said that your Play-Doh wasn't too watery. Hopefully it isn't too hard, and you're getting lots of weird Play-Doh that you can play with. I know Gabby showed you her little gingerbread man before, and she tried making a star, but unfortunately it ripped. So I can't show you the star. It's but <laughs> it looks like she's coming back. So let me just spotlight the Play-Doh camera again. And you guys can keep going. I'm back. Okay. So with the white Play-Doh, the one that you didn't add any color to, what we're going to be doing is, again, this is the part where you got to be careful. So I'm going to use a plastic wrap just anything that you have or if your parents have a mat that they don't mind getting dirty that's also doable you can also use it but I'm going to use a Ziploc bag so that I don't, I don't get food coloring on my table okay this is optional again you don't have to do it this is another bonus um, thing of the play-doh but it's just so that we see oh yeah my my star is mushed but yeah, like we can see the stripes and stuff, like a cool little design. So I'm going to do it with blue, okay? So I'm just going to add a little bit. So I'm going to add five drops. 
and spread it around. It doesn't have to be on the, in the same area, just spread it around. And then with our hands, again, it's fine if you get your hands dirty, um, that's washable. And you can just go to the sink after. I just don't want you to get the table dirty, right? Or whatever surface you're using. But I'm just mixing it in. And as you can see, it's becoming striped. If you find that it's still not mixed in how you want it, just keep adding food coloring. That's fine. So I do one more because guess what? It's a, a lot of dough. So we just mix it in. This is the movement I make. I separate it. Put it back together, separate it, put it back together. And again, after the session, which is almost done, you can um, play with your Play-Doh and also make little creations, like make little people or animals um, or make cookie-shaped designs. That's fine. Um, I want to know, though, what you make. So... If you want, and you can ask your owl for this, of course you have to, you can send your creations to us, to Janelle and I, and we can check it out. I would love to see that. So our email, Janelle is going to type it in the chat. Um, your adults already have it, though, because that's how we've been talking to them, sending them the supply list and the Zoom invite invitation, the link. Um, but we want to see your pictures of your creations. So for example, I made a cookie, gingerbread cookie person. Um, I'm <laughs> I made a star that's smushed, but I'll make it again with you, um, with you campers. So looks like I made my Play-Doh, so it's blue. I'm just going to take a little bit out because I'm going to be my, make be making my star now. So again, just like we play with Play-Doh, you just have to make it a little bit flat and this is where you can start playing with your play-doh now and my cookie cutter and then i just remove what is not on the star and look i have my beautiful star now it's not smudged anymore um yeah so you can make stars you can make people you can make animals you can make a town if you want with your play-doh just, um, I really would love to see your creations. So summer.camps.ca.ca, that's our email address. And guess what? You also might get a chance to be, um, your picture to be on Facebook. I don't know if you know what Facebook is, but your parents might. Um, so you might see your creation on Facebook. I might share my creation on Facebook because I want everybody to see what I made. Um, so this is all for now um that's i hope you had fun making your playlist so we made in my case red and blue um and this is where you now can just play with it so you can make little happy faces yeah, Gabby, and I'm little people you can show out all our amazing campers how to maybe make an animal oh my goodness okay <laughs> well my um creation skills are are as good as cookie cutters, but Janelle, do you think you can, or? Oh, if I can make it? Oh, I guess we'll find out. She's um, really good at drawing, which I think she might be good at this, too. We have five minutes, so I guess I'll try, I, I put you on the spot, Gabby, so I guess I'll try. <laughs> I am good at using cookie cutters, but I know you um, campers, you are so creative. I've seen that all over the session, so Actually, I know you can do it. So before we even switch, Maybe what we'll do and ask on Zoom is, would you like us to show you how to maybe make a Play-Doh animal? And I'll just make that a poll for everybody. Yes. Because um, I know it's almost 12, and I know the session goes until 12. But um, this is just a little bonus activity. It's just, you know, we'll show you how to make an animal out of Play-Doh. Um, but if you really have to go, because again, the session was only an hour and maybe your parents and your adults had, um, planned something for the afternoon, that's completely fine. You can leave. Um, but otherwise, or you can just stay here and make little figurines with Janelle, the animal ones. Um, so it seems like some people are saying, yes, you want to, um, you want Janelle to show you how to make an animal again. This is an option. You don't have to stay on um, on Zoom after. But for those of you who have to go at, at, at like at noon, at 12 o'clock, 
Um, it was a pleasure making Play-Doh with you. I hope you had fun learning about the science behind Play-Doh and also making Play-Doh of your own. Like you made Play-Doh. Now you don't have to go to a store to buy Play-Doh anymore. You can just make it. Ask your parents for the ingredients and you make it. Make different colors. Like I said, if you have leftover ingredients and your parents and adults are okay with you using them, make more um, and have different colors. Just like Play-Doh, when you buy it at the store, it's red, green, purple, and all those colors. Try to make those, mix in the colors, okay? So I will be leaving now. It looks like actually everybody wants you to stay, Janelle, and make the animal. I'll be leaving, and Janelle will be coming in. But again, thank you for joining me. Janelle is coming. Oh, don't worry, Gabby. You don't have to leave. You can make oh, it okay. with us. <laughs> I'm having fun with just like rolling the Play-Doh, though. It's so relaxing. That that in, on its own is relaxing. So if any of you need to leave at 12 o'clock, then that is perfectly okay. You do not have to stay um, past 12 o'clock. So we hope you had lots of fun. I see Caden said that their Play-Doh turned out really, really slimy. Um, and I don't know, Kaden, I don't think we're trying to make slime today. I think we're trying to make Play-Doh. So you might need to add a little bit more flour to your mixture. So I will show you all how to maybe make an animal. Um, and you're free to go if you need to. But if you'd like to stay and make an animal with me, then perfect. Um, you don't have to make the same animal as me. Um, but I think whoever can type the fastest in the chat, I will try and start with that animal and see how it goes. Dog, okay, Olive, I guess we're doing a dog. Like a speedy, speedy um, typer, okay. Uh, maybe we'll do a panda Jocelyn right after. So maybe for the dog, Gabby, what color should I make a dog? Blue, Ooh, um, red dog. Red, red, we're making a red dog, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the head of the dog. So I'm going to take my Play-Doh. I'm going to take a small ball, just like this. If you've ever had Timbits before, it's a little bit smaller than a Timbit. And I'm just going to roll it in my palm so that I can make a nice round head um, for this puppy. Aww. I see Luke says this is awesome, and I'm glad you think so. I'm sure you've made an amazing Play-Doh creation. So this is going to be the head of my dog. It's a little bit big, so hopefully the body can hold the head. Um, I'm going to take the rest of my red Play-Doh, and I think I'm going to make, Gabby, how big would you say a dog? I'm going to make it mm, maybe this size, so yeah. like a large rock, or what do you, what does everyone else think? Maybe um, a small potato. I know a lot of you <laughs> eat potatoes. I love potatoes like french fries, and I'm kind of going to roll it so that it's a little longer. It looks like um, a little, those little hot dogs. Yeah, kind of like a little hot dog. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, what do you think, Gabby? Should the dog sit up or should it, yeah, we'll make the dog sit up. Sit up would be Because nice. Play-Doh can't stand up. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Play-Doh that has a little bit of blue on it. So I'm going to put that side on the top and I'm just going to stick it down a little bit and give it, I don't know if any of you were at our marshmallow session, and I like to do this thing where it's like stick and squish. And so I just like to squish it a little bit so it stays in place. And now you can see when I try and pull it, it's stuck to the body. And if yours doesn't do that, you can use little toothpicks to hold it in if your parent, if your adults say it's okay. Or you can just give it the little stick and squish like I did. So this is going to be quite the round and chubby little dog. Um, so I'm going to do the little ears next. And I'm going to take a little bit of the Play-Doh. And I think this dog is going to have little floppy ears instead of pointy ears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my Play-Doh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it like a teardrop or like a raindrop. I'm going to flatten it a little bit so that's not too big. And it's going to look like this. So it kind of looks like almost like the top of your, the tip of your finger. And it's going to look like a little raindrop. You're going to pinch the top so it's a little bit pointy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide this is going to be the front of my dog. So I'm going to put a little ear on the side like this. And that's going to be my floppy ear number one. Give it a little stick and squish. I'm going to do that with another ear to do a nice little stick and squish. I'm going to shape it again, just like a raindrop, <laughs> just like this. 
And so that way, hopefully you can see it. It looks like a little raindrop. It's gonna be a little bit flat with a nice point at the top. And I'm gonna stick it to the side of the head, just like this. Stick and squish. And this is what our dog looks like so far. It's gonna be a bit of a lumpy, little bit of a circular, a round boy, Gabby, if you will. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. <laughs> it's like Clifford the big red dog. I don't Ooh, know if you know about Clifford. Do any of you know who Clifford is? I hope so. And so I'm going to give my dog a bit of a nose, or we'll call it the muzzle. And so I'm going to take an even smaller piece of Play-Doh and roll it into a tiny little ball. And I'm going to stick and squish it to the middle of its face, just like this. So now it has like a little nose. And we're going to do another step where we take an even tinier, and maybe I'll make the nose with like a little bit of blue so you can see it. And it's going to be a nice little tiny blue nose that we're going to stick in the middle, just like this. And that's our little dog nose. And of course, the little dog needs eyes. So I think we're going to make them blue. And these are going to be even tinier little balls of Play-Doh. And of course, they go one right here. And that's one little dog eye. And one on the other side. That's another little dog eye. So we have the nose, we have the eyes, we have the ears. Can someone in the chat tell me what I'm missing from this little round dog? Is it done? Is this little dog done? Is it kind of like a snowman dog <laughs> where it has a nice chubby little body, a nice round head and floppy ears? But what is it missing? What should I add? A tail? A tail. Okay. Oh, yeah, very good. Okay, so this little guy needs a tail. And so let me just, so I'm going to take a little bit of my Play-Doh and this one I'm going to make into a nice round, it kind of looks like a little worm. And I'm going to stick it to my dog's butt on the other side, stick and squish. So cute. Okay. It's so my dog, dog has a tail now, perfect. And it has floppy ears, eyes, a nose. And is it? It, does this dog just kind of bounce around like this? <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> I think that's a pretty cute dog if you ask me for Play-Doh. Yes. Um, so maybe we'll keep it like that. And I know that we're at 12.05 right now. Um, and I know a lot of you are still here. Oh, tail and legs. Legs? Oh, my goodness. I guess that's how our dog is going to sit down, isn't it? So I'm going to take, again, a nice little ball like this, kind of like a big marble. I'm going to make it a bit more of like a little log shape, just like that. And it's going to be chubby little legs because our puppy is a very round boy. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put one right here, just underneath it, and tuck it in just like that. I'm going to do it again with another one. Again, the size of kind of like a big marble. And I'm going to roll it so that it's kind of like a log, just like this. And I'm going to stick it underneath our doggo oh, and man. give it a nice little squish, squish. Aww. So now he's sitting on two legs. But how many legs do dogs have, Gabby, usually? Four. Four? Okay. So I need to make how many more legs? Can someone tell me how many more legs does this little doggo still need? Little puppy. Two. Perfect. So again, I'm going to make a marble-sized one. Roll it so it's like a little log. And I'm going to put it just like this so that the doggo is sitting. I know dogs don't really sit like this in real life. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy. But our dog is a Play-Doh dog. Play-Doh dogs can do anything that we want them to do. It so, looks so strong. Yeah, we have a very strong little dog here with his little tail on the back. We have the perfect little round body. And an arm that's a little bit too big for him. <laughs> I'll make this one a little bit He's smaller. He's a strong dog. He's a strong dog, everyone. Okay. So this is our dog. And he's a bit of a round boy. Maybe it looks a bit more like a panda if we had made the ears a little rounder. Yeah. So Jocelyn, if you wanted to make this little guy a panda, what you could do is you could change the ears. And I'll show you them in blue. So this is going to be like a mixture of both a puppy and a and panda. A panda where I'm going to take a little bit of uh, Play-Doh, just like this. I'm going to roll it into a small ball. I'm going to give it a little squish so it's a little bit flat. And then when I put it on the uh, 
panda dog, we'll call it, that's going up like this, kind of like little <laughs> panda ears. Looks like the puppy has a bow on it. Just like this. And so now we have both a panda and a dog, depending on what you like. <laughs> I know I'm not the very best at making this is beautiful. Um, little Play-Doh creatures. I think I made the arms too big, but... I'm hoping you all did much better than me, because I'm sure you're all amazing expert Play-Doh creation artists. <laughs> um, and we hope that you send us an email of what, that, what you've made, because we'd love to see it. Um, but that's 1208. Um, I'd love how a lot of you stayed with us, but you are more than welcome to go now. Um, Gabby and I will just stick around for just another couple minutes in case you have any questions. But we will be turning our camera and our sound off unless you type something in the chat. Um, so with that, we hope you had lots and lots of fun. We hope you email us your amazing creations because hopefully they look a little bit better than my panda dog. Um, and Gabby, anything else you'd like to say? Um, yes, I, I just want to share my screen with you so that you all can... Um, oh, not active. Why? Sorry. So you can all send us your email. So yeah, send us your email to summer.camps at sate.ca okay. and um, I'll just leave this right here for you and your adults but like Janelle said we're turning our cameras and sound off so again thank you for joining us it was a pleasure and so much fun making this this is a really <laughs> cute puppy panda puppy but um, yeah see you later next time on Monday we're doing fish patterns with Janelle <laughs> bye bye everybody